show starts in Friends, I hope you are doing great today wherever you are in the world. I want to welcome you, of course, to the Artist Heart Live. I'm a little bit uh, cooler today in my shirt and my waistcoat uh, because it's an absolutely roasting hot day here in Scotland. The last of the hot weather, I believe. I am your lovable host, John Morris, and this is the Artist Heart Live. Well, folks, it has been a really strange week since I saw you last. Like, really, really bizarre. Um, first of all, I believe on the Monday last we had a, uh, a new prime minister uh, here in the United Kingdom. Uh, the the uh, I think that the verdict is still out, as they say, uh, on this prime minister. But hopefully she will do her, uh, her utmost and she will do a fantastic job. Boris Johnson, though he may be remembered for having a party at Downing Street during a time of lockdown, I think actually when he looked back at his life and he looked back at things in Eleven Downing Street, um, you know he concluded that he had done his utmost to fulfill his duties. And uh, the fact that he left to a roaring applause and he was a really eccentric character and so many more things, you know, I think is, is a really awesome way to go out more than anything else. Yes, the guy made a mistake. He, uh, he did something that he shouldn't have done. Um, but I think, and I hope, that's the thing that, he, you know, that he's remembered for, for at least trying, giving a go, giving it a go, more than anything else. And then, of course, last week as well, uh, the bizarreness continued because, unfortunately, as I'm sure everybody around the world now uh, is aware, um, our beloved Queen Elizabeth II passed away um, at 94 years old, uh, or 96 years old. Um, it's, it's my granny-in-law that's 94. Um... And I don't know about you, but I was deeply moved by this. I was really, really 
saddened. She always seemed like she was going to go on forever, and uh, there wasn't a time where she hadn't been there. She was the one consistent thing, really, with our great nation. And, um, you know, I'm sure Prince Charles, now King Charles, will do a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And, of course, the opening song to this uh, show was the Duke of Earl, uh, which I just thought, you know, Philip would have sung to Lilibet. Um as he called her, uh, and, uh, and greet her to the, through the, the gates of, of heaven. Um, and I, I really want to do something special. So it has. It's been a, it's been a strange, strange old week. Um, plus some weird things have been going on with me. Uh, I occasionally, for whatever reason, seem to have these weird bouts of, uh, you know, bodily stuff that goes on. The latest being uh, that, you know, a tweet back that would you know, move about in different areas. And uh, one minute it'd be in my right sciatic nerve in my in my right side. And then the next day I would get up and there'd be a burning sensation in my, in my left hip. And then it'd be in my wrist. And then it'd be in my elbow. And then my stomach was playing up. It was really, really bizarre. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I think all of these things can be warning lights to let me know, look, you need to really get yourself under control here. You need to... Um, you know, pr practice your mental medication, as I as I call it, and uh, and I did, and I'm feeling much much better. Um, so it was really exciting, and of course, this weekend uh, we've got a bit of a trip that's going to be coming up. I'm going to see my parents down in Lincolnshire, so I'm really excited to to do that. Uh, we'll be back by the time this actually airs, so um, you know, next week she'll be going on as planned, and I'll be able to show you videos, obviously, from our time in Lincolnshire. But with that in mind, folks, uh, I know we're doing a little bit of a longer intro here um, but I want to get your views and opinions. I'm just about to start back studying at uh, university. I'm actually a student uh, for a doctorate in psychology and I'm studying a BSc presently um, for that and um, I love doing the show. I really, really do. But I want to know from you, you know, what what do you think? Do, do you think, you know, we, we need to take a break? Uh, the other thing is as well is I don't want to lose the momentum that we've been gradually building over the weeks. Like our little pony, you know, this this show is our little pony and we're galloping forward. We're doing all the things that we can do and we want to see it succeed. We want to see it thrive. We want to see it, you know, blossom and do all amazing stuff. Um, but equally, we don't want to outstay our welcome. Uh, we have got a show in mind for the winter, which will be our Artist Heart Season 4, which is the Artist Heart on tour. Um, and this this year, it actually takes place from uh, Lake Garda in Italy, uh, which is it's a phenomenal show. Uh, if you've ever seen any of our other Artist Heart on the Road shows, you will know it's incredible. We bring you uh, not only artwork from around the from around the world, but also these amazing locations um, and the the inspiration for many of my paintings, ideas for books, and and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's really what I'm thinking of is going to be the next step. And then we may, we may um, obviously have our Christmas variety show. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now. And we're still looking to build, still looking to grow. But let me know in the comments section, what what are your thoughts really with with, uh, with, with going on? Um, and talking of books, of course, all being well later on this year, we are still hoping to put out the first in my brand new book series uh, that is going to be... It's going to be the ultimate historic time travel novel. Um, more details to follow on that. I really haven't been letting anything out of the bag recently about it um, because I'm really playing it near and dear to my heart until I'm ready for it to come out. But let me assure you now, I will never, ever write anything else that is going to be bigger than this book that is coming out, than this series that's coming out. Um, and I'm okay with that. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be exciting. It is passionate. Um, and it's, it's, it is like the ultimate, it really is the ultimate work of historical fiction that there is. And I can categorically say that. Um, everything that I have has gone into this and it's going to be tremendous fun but there's more news to come on that later on on today's show we have obviously got the uh, the lighter side of things with your three minutes of positive energy I get to present to you guys another exciting painting as well and we're going to take a look at a very very unique very different very wild and wacky historical artist but I think right now let, let's go to the funny shall we and uh, I hope you enjoy this I'll see you at the end <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I think your cat's broken. <laughs> oh, look. 
Look at you, little tiny kitty. Little tiny baby kitty. Ow! Curse your tiny kitty! Three, two, one. Oh, potato salad. That's good potato salad. It's good potato salad. Giving sparkling water to my dog and seeing his reaction. Get down. Get down. Down. Should I let her in? Bark at your dog. Roof. Bark. <laughs> no, it's not over there. Maybe it's uh in the ground here. No. I lift up. Tell me your indoor cat won't survive in the wild without Wait, telling me. Without. What did you do to yourself? Coco. Oh my god, please. Koki. <gasps> it's, it's good. It's okay. It's okay. What's wrong with this? Oh god. Okay, on this episode of Ask John, we got a really great question from Leslie in Dusseldorf, Germany, and she says, John, simply, what can we do to survive inflation 2022? Leslie, I think that's a great question. It's one that I get asked so many times on so many different platforms. I think the answer is actually really, really simple. First of all, you got to understand that this is not going to last forever. Um, eventually, as all of these inflations have done historically, it will level out, prices will start to come down again. That's the first thing. Second thing is, I would begin now looking at what you can do for the next time this happens. These events should serve to anybody as a reminder of this is the way that the world works, okay? This is the way that the world has been conditioned. Every five to 10 years, you get quite a major global realignment of finances, okay? Um, so I would start looking at investments. Hardgreaves and Lansdow is who I personally use. I am not a financial investor, but I am able to provide tips, at least of what's working and what isn't. Right now, I'm seeing the Investico uh, S&P 500 working really, really well. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up, um, you know, and it's not as complicated as what people make out. Okay, it's actually relatively simple, but you do need to do your research. So that's the first thing I would say is look at... Um, uh, look at investments, okay, and the S&P 500, what they call index funds. Uh, you cannot lose money on a investment unless, it's the same as buying a house, unless you sell it for less than what you bought it for, okay? So that's really important to remember. You cannot lose money on an investment unless you sell it for less than what you paid for it, okay? Um, so it's really important to remember that. 
You want to make sure that you're going into this for the long term. Uh, other things that I would say is look at building assets. Now, I'm saying this to creative minds. I'm saying this to business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, you name it. I'm saying this to people around the world. You need to look at building assets. If you're an author, write some books, publish them on KDP, on Amazon, and start learning how to market. If you can market, if you can sell, and if you can conduct yourself business-wise, you should do well. We've got a brand new course that's coming out, hopefully later on this month, called How to Become a best-selling author, which I personally host. Um, and I walk you through all the things that I have learned in the last couple of years of my journey uh, becoming a uh, best-selling published author, but also a, a, a best-selling self-published author uh, with the battles we'll face. So I think it's really important to remember, do not panic, first of all. Second of all, look at investments. Start educating yourself, okay? Start learning how to pull yourself out of this. People keep saying to me all, all the time, you know, oh, there's nothing I can do, there's nothing I can do. You've got the internet at your hands. You've got over 100 million people, or probably a billion people that use the internet every single day. You can earn money from sitting on your backside at home. How do I know? Because I do it. Whenever I market, I'm usually marketing downstairs in our living room well, Katie's upstairs editing the book and sometimes we'll switch around and we'll do whatever we're going to do. Um, so I know that for a fact. I've done that for 20 years. Katie survives um, and does a great job, not only survives, but thrives with piano students during a recession. I survive and thrive with art clients, with people buying my books, with people buying my courses all around the world. Um, again, the money has not left the planet. Be very, very clear in this. The money has not left the planet. It's just become a little bit harder. And there's been a little bit of a realignment. That's completely normal. That's what happens, okay? So don't panic. Look at investments. Start looking to build assets. And really, really ask yourself, what could you do right now that can help you get from where you are to where you want to be. Remember, businesses are going through the same issues that you're going through. Uh, everybody's affected by this, but they don't have to be paralyzed by this. Um, you know, and if you are really, really stuck and you need help, drop me a comment in, in, this, in the comment section below and I will be more than glad to respond to your messages and everything that's there because sometimes it just needs someone pointing you in the right direction and I'm more than happy to help with that. So on to the lighter side of things now, folks, we're going to move on with a little bit of art and I hope you enjoy this. I'll see you at the end.
what to paint. We should go for a walk and find something fun and exciting and different to paint. <laughs> My painting is exciting. It's always changing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, now it really looks exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's really moving. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it looks like the butterflies brought us to Flitter Flutterland. Ah, I was not expecting my guests to arrive until later. Huh? Oh? Guests? Oh, I love garden parties. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a garden party. It's a soiree, an evening gathering. Because we oh? artists are busy painting outside huh? in the day. Hey, look, Maddie. She paints like dancing butterflies, quickly and gently. Ah. <laughs> well, have you ever noticed that when you're really looking at something, your eyes do the same thing, ever so gently and quickly dart all around it? Oh. And this must be how butterflies see. But everything looks pretty blurry to me. Whoa, the dog dizzy. And so who <laughs> is it you came with? Monsieur Degas, Monet, uh, Renoir? Hey. I know those names. They're Impressionist painters. Yes, that's what the critics call us, Impressionists. <laughs> it's actually quite fitting because <laughs> we paint the impression of what we see. You see, I'm painting this area of grass right here, but just now it changed color because the light changed. And so that's what I paint, my impression, how I see it. Woohoo! The grass changed color. Magic grass. So, you're one of them? You're an Impressionist painter? Ah, well, as in most notorious gangs, I'm the woman in the group, Berthe Morisot. A gang of Impressionists? That sounds exciting. I read that art salons are when artists and friends get together to talk about art and how fun it is. <laughs> oh, how challenging it can be. Ah, oh, but that's part of the fun, n'est-ce pas? Hmm, well, this impressionist has the impression that the sun has gone for the day. Yeah, and the bright colors. Well, perhaps it's time for a little snack, oui? I bought some croissants at the patisserie this morning. Uh, would you mind bringing <laughs> my easel for me? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maddie, come and see this. It's like the painting that I did. Well, there is a toy sailboat in it. And it looks sunny and shady, too. And windy. I can almost feel it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> da -da, wow! It looks like it's frozen in time. L like it's behind a frosty window. Yeah, you can see movement everywhere in there, even though it's just a calm scene. The woman looks relaxed, but very focused on her work. And the little girl? It's like we can see her daydreaming. I can almost see a fairy beside her. That's what Impressionist painting is all about. Capturing fast, fleeting moments. The sparkling play of sunlight and shadow <laughs> can make the most simple and tranquil of scenes colorful and full of energy. Manny, look! Look at this! Colorful and energetic. This one is my oh. young woman knitting. Full of energy and movement. I can really feel how busy she is, knitting stitch by stitch. Hey! Even the brush strokes look like stitches. Whoa! The dog crazy! Hey, yeah! It really does look like it's all stitched together. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That painting looks different huh? from far away. Ah. I see a green triangle at the top and a beige triangle on the bottom. And, and the chair is half off the canvas. <laughs> When the eye looks at the chair, the woman knitting seems in focus. Have you ever noticed how when your eyes look at something, what they see at the edge is not really in focus, but it appears to be? Nothing's in focus when you're following a butterfly! Whoa! Hey! When you look at her dress, you only see white, fast lines. But when your eyes look at something else or dance around it like a butterfly, you see shimmering light on her dress. Whoa! Madame Morisseau, from here, it's like you painted soft, velvety flower petals. But up close, I see only squiggles and dashes of color. But from way back here, they look like a girl sitting on a chair. Vision is more than just looking. It's what you see and how you look, your impression. If I were to paint you, I would want to see how the light looks on you and paint that. The eyes see more of an impression towards the edge of your view. Ah, so by looking slightly away, you see shape and color and paint <laughs> that instead of the exact details. Everywhere I look, I see something to paint. My eyes are dancing around everything. Da -da, whoa! Everything's different! It's the lighting! It changes everything! So then, huh? there's always something new to paint! Oui, oui! I could paint the same thing at different times of the day or different times of the year, and it will be a different painting every time! I can't wait to paint the way I see things! This is gonna be fun! Let's go, Maddie! Oh, but your croissant! Well, you must come back again, n'est-ce pas? Goodbye, Bye. Bye. Au revoir. How are you doing, Maddie? I'm having lots of fun. There's so much going on here. I'm almost done. Come and see. Huh? Well, you have to move your head like this. See? I call it flight of the butterflies because they wouldn't stop moving. Uh. Woo -hoo. I sent my huh? belt spinning. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Artist Heart Live. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the section below for us. Share it with a friend because you never know who may need to see it or hear it in their time of struggle and difficulty. Uh, I think that's all good. Come and check out my brand new book, of course, The Battles We All Face, Hope in Times of Uncertainty, 40 of the Most Common and misunderstood issues that people go through all broken down really simply in ways that you're going to be able to actually be able to heal yourself and so much more. You can check that out on Amazon, available on ebook, paperback and hardback. And of course, if you head to thejohnmorris.co.uk, you can check out the audiobook version as well. And until next time, folks, I have been John Morris. This has been The Artist Heart Live. We're out of time. Namaste, my friends. God bless. <laughs>